The Artifacts of Mound Independence and the Stories They Tell, a series of brief explorations of Revolutionary War artifacts from Mount Independence on Lake Champlain in Orwell, Vermont. Welcome to Mount Independence, Vermont State Historic Site in Orwell, Vermont. Today, I'm Mike Blakesley, and today we are going to be talking about the locally procured food sources. We know that they had beef, we know that they had pig, but for the archaeological record, we found that they were also procuring their own food from the wild game and fish in the area, which is interesting because the soldiers were prohibited from fishing by general order. Yet, in the camps, the archaeologists have found fish bones. Now you can always trust the archaeological record. So the archaeological record says that some of these people were fishing here. We also know that fish hooks were found in the campsites here. So for some reason they were fishing even though they were prohibited to do so. The, um, the reason they were blocked from doing fishing um, there's a number of reasons. Number one, um, the way the walls are of this fort and um, the amount of activity going on, the um, soldiers, there's no safe place for them to fish on the lake unless they're in a boat, which is used for military purposes, or fishing off the bridge when that was completed, but that wouldn't have been a very useful thing and would have been prohibited for military reasons. So. Um, the other reason is that we know that during the winter they were burying their dead in the lake, which means that um, they probably wouldn't have wanted the fish that were obtained locally either. So they weren't supposed to fish, yet they did. Um, we also know that they were obtaining deer, which meant that people were out hunting. Now if you think about it, a lot of these soldiers were equipped with their hunting muskets, which they brought from home. So they were really ready to be hunting. And they would have to wander from the mount in the general vicinity to go find wild game. Because the deer, as more and more people came here, the deer and the other animals would leave, um, as you can imagine. But we know through the archeological record that there were deer being eaten here and harvested. Um, and we know from the deer bones, which you see here, that they were in fact um, eating venison. Um, we know also from the diaries and journals of some of the officers that they were having meals that included venison and um, wild games such as quail and um, partridge and passenger pigeons. Passenger pigeons would come up and they'd entirely block the sky, they were so great in number, and they didn't like to fly at night, which made them easy to get hold of. You would literally go out and shake the tree, and they would fall out of the tree, and you were able to capture the passenger pigeons. Now, sometimes when you're doing archaeological work, you find things that you're not really sure of the provenance. Here we have a woodchuck skull, and in one of the southern batteries, um, in one of the Hessian um, batter, um, batteries, they um, found an entire woodchuck um, skeletal remains. The question is, was that part of the Revolutionary War record, or is it a woodchuck that burrowed its way into um, the building after, after the occupancy here and gave up the ghost and left a skeleton? Um, we don't know. We know that if it had been here during the Revolutionary War, it probably would have been eaten, in which case the skeleton wouldn't have been found together because they would have torn it apart. So we know from the archaeological record that they were eating locally procured food, and um, the archaeological record can always be trusted. Thank you.